Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, if you're watching this in other parts of the world and it's not morning, I would say a very good day to you. I hope everybody's doing well on this Wednesday. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, March 6th. 2019. This is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, the energies of this are not specific to the date and time that I am putting this out right now. Energies are fluid, so this could be something that happened in the past. This could be something that's moving, happening for you in the future. Maybe it's something that's happening now, or maybe it's something that's not happening at all. But, you know, take what resonates, yeah? Um, if you would like to go ahead and follow me on Instagram at divine underscore conversations, and you can find me on YouTube at divine conversations 2711. And if you would like a personal reading with me, just go ahead and send me an email. All of the information for a personal reading is in the description box below. Before we move forward, before I forget, um, I just want to let you guys know there will be no morning coffee tomorrow, Thursday, um, March 7th, because I am working an event tonight that's going pretty late. Like I'll be there. I'm scheduled to be there until midnight. Um, luckily, it's here in Brooklyn. It's not far from my apartment, but um, I won't be finished until midnight. So I want to make sure that I get home and can rest enough to make it to class at 10 a.m. the next day. So because of that, there will be no morning coffee for Thursday, but there will be morning coffee, the, there will, excuse me, there will be the weekend edition on Friday, okay? Yay. All right, so without further ado, let's get to it. Mm, num, 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 num. All right, guys, let's see what we've got today. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. For today, Wednesday, March 6th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, um, so uh, also moving forward, um, I am still working on these Zodiac readings. I, I'm most likely going to have them finished and the rest of all of them posted by Saturday. Um, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try my best to do, I, my goal is to do three of them to this evening before I have to go to the party, but actually, now that I think about it, I don't think that's too realistic because I have a personal reading that I've scheduled. Um, but either way, I'm going to have them all finished and uploaded by Saturday, okay? So just stay tuned. And thank you for your patience on that one. I still have, I've got to do Virgo, Libra, Sagittarius, Scorpio, Capricorn, and Aquarius. So that should be finished by Saturday, okay? Okay, here we go. Morning coffee, Wednesday, March 6th, 2019. All right, we're gonna give this one more shuffle and then we'll see what we've got for the day. All right, here we go, guys. Wednesday, March 6th, 2019. Oops, oh, okay, well, there we go. Okay. We've got it. Oh. Ah. All right. Underneath the deck, we have strength here. Okay. We also have the Six of Wands in reverse and death in reverse. Interesting. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, the fool. 
the sun, the six of swords, and the tower. Oh boy. Well, this sure is interesting. <laughs> and the plot thickens. <laughs> All right, well, obviously there's a tower moment here, kids. You know, I'm not sure death Neat is supposed to be in reverse here. Yeah, spirit saying it isn't. Um, it fell out kind of sideways, and when I went to go pick it up, Initially, I was going to pick it up in a way that would reverse it. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I should go with that. But it's not meant to be reversed here. All right. So this is a very, th this, mm, wow. So <clears throat> we're going through a strong period of ego dissolution. Or, as Spirit just said, um, putting our egos in check. And that's not something that's meant to be malicious or vindictive. Um, it's not even like, it's not out of anger, rage or anything like that. It's more just a matter of, you know, over the centuries, our egos have really been given the power to run amok. Um, and now our society is largely ego-based, right? Um, but, <clears throat> As you've been hearing, at least me say or channel, um, we've been going through a heart chakra awakening, the cosmic heart awakening. So with that, the ego kind of gets, I guess you could say stamped down a little bit. Um, yeah, and that's and this is really what I'm seeing between the six of wands in reverse and death, okay? The six of wands in reverse is talking to talking about the ego, pride, ego, arrogance. Um, and even though this is in reverse, which could mean a loss, a failure, it doesn't mean that ultimately there's there is a victory here. OK, and that's coming in through the strength, through, through the death of the e the ego i just heard death of the illusion so i guess um the illusion here is you know all of the 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 negative talk or the negative narrative that would come from the ego all the self-limiting beliefs yeah all the self-limiting beliefs that you know, have held us back <clears throat> over time. So we have the Fool, the Sun, the Six of Swords, and the Tower. I mean, I do... Now, um, well, no, the Tower is Mars energy. I was going to say maybe... The, I, was gonna, I was thinking, wait, we have Mercury. Mercury is in retrograde right now. There is a new moon tonight... And that's both those both of those are in Pisces. But we don't really have any Pisces. Well, you do. I guess you have Piscean energy in the Fool, but not really. I don't really see that see it that way. We have Scorpio energy though, and Leo energy, both be between Strength and the Sun. Now, um, this Tower. Let's talk about this Tower energy. And actually, once I get into the clarification, I think I want to clarify that card specifically. The tower energy feels like what we've been going through over the past few weeks, and it even can be um, indicative of the energy that we're currently in right now, being the Mercury retrograde with the new moon, both in Pisces. Okay, the new moon is tonight here in the United States. Um, it's probably where, you, uh, if you're on, like, say, the other side of the world, it's probably this evening for you. I don't know how, exactly how that works. It's um, in, it's on the 6th here, which is today. But anyway, um, 
But this tower energy feels mostly like just the energy that we've been in lately. There's been so much purging. There's been so much destruction of the old um, coming back up. The, the old coming back up. Some things that, you know, you need are working on deeper healing of that th th those are coming back up. Maybe things that you thought you may have been finished or healed, done with. You had healed them. Um, that's what this tower energy feels like. And this six of swords is this, is like the solve, you know, is the healing balm, is um, us moving from rougher waters to calmer waters. There's a lot of mental healing that's happening here. And it has everything to do with an ego death, okay? And then you have the fool with the sun. I know I just did that kind of backwards, but that's how it flows. So, hey, that's, that's how we're doing it. We have the sun and the fool, okay? We are embarking on a new journey. You know, there is enlightenment happening here. Illumination. Seeing things clearly or seeing things clearer than you have in the past. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is definitely an energy of ego dissolution, 100%. And taming the beast within with strength here, okay? There's also an understanding that, um, that you know, as you, as you work towards balancing the ego, right? And the ego is not a bad thing. It's just how we have been conditioned, how society has developed over the past three centuries, well, millennia, really. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know the exact date, but for over, up until now, um, we've been wild, largely or wildly, as I was going to originally say, ego driven. And it makes perfect sense. I mean, the ego is a part of us that is meant to observe and to basically alert us to any danger to help preserve our lives in ways and whatnot, whatever. But that's taken over, basically. Okay, and so now it's time to rein that in. And so as you do that, you're basically taming the beasts within. You're calming your fears, you're calming the worries, you're you're listening to it, you're taking the 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 advice, you're you know, and that kind of stuff, but you're not driven from that place. You're acting from a much more conscious place than just a much greater consciousness than just your ego alone, okay? You know, I was doing happy hour last night and the fool came out and the fool came out quite a bit, which is kind of awesome. There are a lot of new starts, new beginnings in the works here. Okay. All right, so now let's let's um Let's clarify a little here. Okay, I'm uh, I'm gonna use the Epic Tarot. Um, and Spirit wants me to start with death in this ego dissolution. Okay, so let's clarify that. Six of Wands in reverse, death. Now. I'm not saying all of your ego problems are going to be done by the time this cycle ends. Um, everything is cyclical, okay? Everything is a cycle. You know, you you tackle one part, you move on, it, you, you circle back around to it, and then you tackle a deeper part of it, okay? But this does feel like it's a strong, it's a strong period. Like there's going to be a, some significant change after this within you, um, you know, once, once the dust settles and all that good stuff. All right. So let's talk about this ego dissolution here, please, spirit. One more shuffle. All righty. Let's see what we've got here. Clarification, please, spirit, for this ego dissolution. Six of Wands in reverse. Death. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Excellent. Underneath the... Whoa. 
you've got three tens here, guys. The Ten of Pentacles is underneath the deck. Um, and this is perfect because this is symbolizing the physical part of ourselves, um, the physical rep representation, the physical manifestation, the ego, right? Which is a construct of human world as far as we know it so far. We've got, wow, we've got the Ten of Cups, the Ten of Wands, okay, the Seven of Swords, the Two of Cups, good Lord, the Knight of Wands, the Knight of Swords, and the King of Cups. My, my, my. So there's definitely emotional maturity absolutely coming into play here taking responsibility for the self and the actions. And this came out in my daily, Insta Daily reading yesterday. It's crazy how these readings between Morning Coffee and Instagram are all kind of, this week at least, they are, um, they're all mirroring each other, coinciding. Now, Knight of Swords, Knight of Wands. There's, wow, there's, what's the, I, I, what's the rush, I want to ask. <clears throat> but I guess it's not so much of a rush. It's really not about the speed. It's more about the force by which this is happening. And it could be, it could be that you're being pulled in two different directions or it could be, these could be the opposing sides of you between the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Swords. Or this could symbolize your ego as a whole. The energies of the Knight of Swords and the Knight of Wands. Wanting to rush into things, wanting to just tear things down, being very, yeah. But this, okay, so this is the beast that we're taming. Knight of Swords, Knight of Wands. This is the ego here. Okay, and wow. Give me. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm looking at this here, just trying to working on channeling it here for you. Seven of Swords, Two of Cups is the self-deception that keeps you from balancing out, from finding that balance and that union within. The self-deception, the lies, the misconceptions about yourself and the world around you. Ten of Pentacles, I'm sorry, Ten of Cups, Ten of Wands too. So three tens here. So we're releasing we're releasing the burdens with this Ten of Wands card in favor of our Ten of Cups, Ten of Pentacles. Those two come out in my readings pretty often, but that's like the ultimate, ultimate everything. One side is the emotional fulfillment. The other side is the physical fulfillment. Both represent family. So whatever it is that's holding you back from achieving that is what you're working on releasing now. But there was definitely a lot of self-deception self here. It could even be um, in romantic relationships, you know, with others, maybe even partnerships or, or like friendships or whatnot. Uh, the deception, the lies, the cheating, that, is, could, that could really could be coming up and now, I, I, with that said, that doesn't mean, because we don't have the Page of Cups here, so I don't see anyone really maybe like coming forward and apologizing, but I do see someone stepping up and taking, starting to take responsibility for their actions with this King of Cups here. And facing some of the immaturity they may have dealt with in the past for egoic reasons. Knight of Wands, Knight of Swords, okay? Yeah. Well, that's not too bad. Let's talk about this tower next. Okay, let's see here. The tower, please, spirit. Give us a little bit of clarification. Six of swords. Wow. 
Ace of Pentacles, Seven of Wands, and this one. Ha! <laughs> Judgment with the Nine of Cups. Nine of Cups is underneath the deck. Now, looky here. The Six of Swords came out, okay? This is the Six of Swords is coming out twice. We are absolute, and it fell out. It fell on the Seven of Cups. I'm sorry, the Seven of Swords and the Two of Cups, okay? So we're definitely moving away from this deceptive energy. Seven of Swords, Two of Cups. This, this, and this doesn't just have to be in um, a romantic relationship or some sort of partnership, a creative partnership, a business partnership, or whatever. A friendship doesn't have to be that. It really, most likely, this most likely feels like um, self-deception. Healing, whoops, healing is in play here. You know, this healing might be a little difficult. It is, because there are some things you're going to have to face about yourself that you're going to have to come to terms with. But just do it, because you're not going to be free of this torment, we can call it, if you don't face it. But here we go. Looky here. On the tower, we have Ace of Pentacles, or Ace of Discs, Ace, a Seven of Books, or Seven of Wands, and Judgment. Resurrection, redemption, reconciliation, maybe. So, okay, maybe there could be some reconciliation. Again, though, I don't feel like that's likely. It's possible, obviously. This is a general reading, but this is more about understanding your circumstances, taking responsibility for your actions, and just moving forward from there. Not necessarily about hashing it out or reopening the past, blah, blah, blah. But there's satisfaction here, wish fulfillment here, relief also. This is what I'm feeling from the Nine of Cups mostly, relief. Like finally feeling like, finally being able to breathe or breathe clearer or see clearer. Finally being able to be clearer in your mind without all of the, the worry, the struggle, fighting against yourself or even fighting against others. And fighting in the, against others comes in the form of just not engaging, not even worried about it any longer. For some of you, a lot of the things that you used to bother you, used to get under your skin, might I say, grind your gears, <laughs> doesn't affect you any longer or won't affect you any longer once you balance, once you bring this greater sense of balance back into your system between the ego and your, your a higher self, I guess you could say. Yeah, that's really good, guys. Look, this is not going to be an e this is not an easy thing. It hasn't been an, an easy thing. I really feel like a lot of us and actually not going to lie, but this really does feel like it connects all the way back to um, a lot of the purging, the ancestral purging and lack mentality purging and all that and, and healing that we've been going through since like November. It feels like a deeper extension of it. It's like you've gone through so much of a change that now the only thing that's left is to, well, not the only thing, but the next step would be to align the ego with this change that you're going through. So that's why, that really could be why a lot of some really nasty stuff may have come up over the last, we'll say like week, or so, maybe even two weeks. Okay. All right. So last thing I wanna clarify is this fool energy with the sun here. Yeah. The fool with the sun, please, spirit. Five of swords. Ah, yep, 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 okay. Underneath the deck, we have the Hierophant. Got a good amount of cards here. The Magician, Three of Cups, Four of Pentacles, Death again. Oh wait, actually that was over here, so we're gonna put this here. Ah, the Queen of Swords with the Eight of Wands, the Queen of Cups with the High Priestess. My, my, my. Okay, let's start here. 
So you have, okay, with this full energy, with the sun, we have, well, the, with the full energy, we have the five of swords. This could be retrograde energy, but ultimately this is that uh, ego battle energy that we have, the extreme ego battle, the destructive ego battle. Done. The world. The magician creating something new, okay? Embarking on a new journey. Now, you do have a progression from the fool to the magician here, even though it's within different decks. You do have a progression. So I do feel like um, you've already taken this leap of faith and now you're manifesting the new out of the old, right? You have the Three of Cups, which is a celebratory energy, body, mind, and spirit um, in balance. This is also could symbolize you coming into union, I guess you could say, with soul family um, and letting go, the pa letting the past go with the Four of Pentacles, just letting it go, but also re-solidifying your foundation here. It could very well be maintaining the foundational work that you've put into play. Um, I do feel like this is a bit of a solitary energy also with the Four of Pentacles here. Learning to appreciate solitude. It's very much, it, it does feel miserly. I'm not going to lie. It does feel a little miserly, um, a little loner-ish, slightly hermitish. Um, but it feels, it's not like a situation where you're, you're keeping to yourself to like find yourself. You're keeping to yourself because <laughs> you just don't want to get caught up or wrapped up in a lot of the low vibrational energies that could be around right now. Self-preservation. There we go. Okay. And that makes perfect sense. Because over here... What landed on the Six of Swords is the Queen of Swords, the Eight of Wands, and Death. Yeah. And this is the second time Death is coming out here in this reading today. Okay. So this is swiftly, this is like straight up no bullshit. No, no questions asked. Just cutting things out. Moving very, very quickly towards this transformation here. And then you have the High Priestess with the Queen of Cups and the Hierophant is at the bottom of the deck. So to me, this is speaking about, number one, balance between masculine and feminine. Number two, very strong psychic ability. Per, uh, psych, um, the, 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 the word, the specific word that's being used here by spirit is perception. Being able to see very clearly through the shit. And then we also have a balance between masculine and feminine in the Hierophant and the, Emperor, and the High Priestess who are counterparts. And to me, that's just, um, that's an energy of really balancing and integrating much, much more of your higher self, of your own personal form of spirituality and the ego aligning with that. This is a pretty vague reading today, but this is a really broad topic, okay? This looks, this could look so many, many different ways for all the different people that are out there. Now, also, I just recognize you do also have another instance of counterparts between the King and the Queen of Cups. So there's definitely a lot of balance between masculine and feminine here. And that is actually helping to give you the foundation to really quiet your ego a lot more than it may have been in the past. And that's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Moving forward, let's get some um, oracle guidance here. I'm going to get some oracle guidance from the uh, animal spirits. Let's 
just see what animals want to lend their support to our strong sense of ego dissolution here. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that wants to pop out from here, but it's, we're all good. Okay. All right, animal spirits, what do you have for us today? Elk. Wow. Oh my God, that's perfect. Okay. Here we go. Elk. Stable. Reliant, I'm sorry, resilient, headstrong, the father. The great elk represents the earth element in its masculine form. This means it provides underlying support and stability amidst life's many cha cha changes. Yes, An elk personality, whether male or female, is fully established in themselves and knows their core values. They become known and respected for acting in ways that uphold those values. Sometimes the elk's ego can become inflated, but for the most part, they make damn good fathers, mothers, lovers, and friends. The world needs more elk energy. And the inflated ego aspect is what is being analyzed and um, um, balanced at this moment. So this is definitely more energy of, you know, the masculine rising and balancing and integrating, which is beautiful. When in balance, elk is supportive, kind, and consistent. When out of balance, elk is pretentious and high and mighty. To bring into balance, one must eat and drink more consciously. All right. And to close out the reading, let's get some oracle guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck. Yeah, lots of instances of balance here between masculine and feminine or just um, union within. You have between the Two of Cups, the King and the Queen of Cups, and then the Hierophant and the High Priestess. Definitely a lot of really very, very balanced energy, which is great. Okay, one card please, Spirit, to close out this reading. Thank you so much. Here we go. Melt into divine desire. Ooh. Card number 54, which does boil down to a nine. Oh, and it's the last card in the deck. Wow. All right. Well, here we go. We bring you the empowerment of melting into divine desire. There is a time and a place on the spiritual path for detachment. The ability to step back and perceive from a neutral perspective can bring great clarity. There is a time for the mind to become clear and peaceful and open to divine guidance, even if that means temporary loss for greater long-term gain. There is also a time to melt into divine desire to allow your passion to motivate and inspire you to attain great progress on your divine life journey where less fervent longing could not. Desire doesn't have to be a distraction from your divine path. It can be a way you discover what has meaning for you and what you feel strongly enough about to never give up on. That's beautiful. That is just beautiful. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. I hope you have a great day. Um, again, just a reminder, there will be no morning coffee tomorrow morning as I'm going to be working an event pretty late. Um, but there will be a weekend edition on Friday. And I'm going to be getting the last of the Zodiac readings out by this Saturday, the 9th, I believe that is. Thursday is this. Yes, the 9th of March. So please um, remain patient. Thank you for your patience. Again, if you also, if you would like a personal reading, go ahead and email me and we'll get you all set up. Yeah. 
But with that said, I hope you all have a great day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee Friday morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye.